welcome everybody. Uh, this is a concert of familiar tunes. Um, I'm a fan of the Fantasia films. Does anybody have any imagery in mind from that music? Can anybody shout it out? Shout it out. Yeah, <laughs> I think of Pink Flamingos. If you haven't seen it, then you need to see it. Um, there will be more music from that particular film, lots of other films. This is gonna be a nod to the style of American music that has particularly been brought into the mainstream as of late. Um, West Side Story has been having a second um, heyday. Um, the late Stephen Sondheim has contributed so much to musical theater and it is like my honor to bring Stephen Sondheim to these kids for the first time and of course they love it. Um, so please enjoy these familiar tunes. Uh, next is uh, Star Wars by this guy that I think people might know. As the concert singers are making their way on stage, um, you should probably know uh, what I do outside of this school. Um, I am on the recording of the most recent uh, Star Wars release, Rise of the Skywalker. Um, I am one of the voices of the Sith. <laughs> um, I sing with a group called the Los Angeles Master Chorale, and um, the group was hired to by John Williams personally to come because he wanted to drive the Rolls Royce of choirs. So you should know that Los Angeles Master Chorale is one of the premier ensembles in the country and you have this in your backyard. Um, it is a choir of a hundred professional voices and I just bring that music directly to these kids and of course they love it. Um, so um, in the recording it, or in the session, he is you know moving real slow and then he gets up to the podium and it's like he has been doing this, you know, the same for his whole life, like it's never, uh, like he didn't age at all. But it was his very last time recording anything for Star Wars, so. Um, yeah, representing Brentwood in the session world. Recuérdame, 
I'm gonna try not to talk too much, but this next poem, you have to know what it is. His name is James Agee, one of the greatest American poet, poets. Um, he studied in schools, and when they get a chance to bring literature into the music classroom, they go, oh! So this is a setting of a very famous American poem, um, Sure on the Shining Night, James Agee.
we're getting a real life lesson here in understudying and being prepared for that golden opportunity when you can step in for somebody. Um, we've had an illness today, um, so we're going to have um, bass part be filled in with different folks, um, but uh, I'll be singing a little, other people will be singing a little bit, but uh, just so you know, uh, we are down one bass. Where are we? What the hell is going on? Dust has only just begun to fall across circles in the car.
Welcome to the Madrigals back onto the stage. This feels so weird talking to you, not facing you. Um, you will notice we have a little bit of costuming. Um, the colors explain themselves, um, but you might uh, recognize this from a famous cartoon. Um, this is a scene from the musical called You Are a Good Man, Charlie Brown. It's called The Book Report, and each one of them is tasked with writing a book report on the tale of Peter Rabbit. And each one of them handles it differently, and um, they might be pouring a little bit of what they've been experiencing in school <laughs> into this song. So please enjoy the parody, The Book Report, from You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Rabbits. Rabbits? Rabbits? Rabbits! A book report on Peter a Rabbit. Book report on Peter Rabbit. Report on Peter Rabbit. This book report is about is Peter Rabbit, which is about this rabbit. I found it buried. I liked the part where it was a. It reminded me of Run Sheriff of Nottingham's back, and then Robin and everyone captured the sheriff and all. And then Robin and everyone captured the sheriff and all of his guests the care. And they have sheriff his guests at their dinner and all, but he wriggled away and he sounded the call and his men rushed in and the arrows flew. Peter Rabbit did sort of that kind of thing too. The other people's name was McGregor. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Hmm. <clears throat> In examining a work such as Peter Rabbit, it is important that the superficial characteristics of its deceptively simple plot should not be allowed to blind the reader to the more substantial fabric of its deeper motivations. In this report, I plan to discuss the sociological implications of family pressures so great as to drive an otherwise moral rabbit to perform acts of thievery, which he consciously knew were against the law. I also hope to explore the personality of Mr. McGregor in his conflicting role as farmer and humanitarian. The novel Peter Rabbit begins by... If I start writing now when I'm not really rested, it could upset my thinking, which is no good at all. I'll get a fresh start tomorrow. It's not due to till Wednesday, so I'll have thir all Thursday unless something should happen. Why does this always happen? I should be outside playing, getting fresh air and sunshine. I work best under pressure, and there'll be lots of pressure if I wait till tomorrow. I should start writing now, but if I start writing now when I'm not really rested, it could upset my thinking, which is no good at all. The name of the rabbit was Peter. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, ha! Down came the staff on his head, smash, and Robin fell like a sack full of lead crash. The sheriff left, and he left him for dead, ah! but he was wrong. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40! Just then an arrow flew in, Boom! It was a sign for the fight to begin, Boom! And then it looked like the sheriff could win, but not for long. Away they ran. Just like, like rabbits, rabbits who run a lot, as you can tell from the story of Peter Rabbit, which this report is about. Pressure exerted on him by his deeply rooted rivalry with Flopsy, 
Moxie, and Cottontail.
for this. Um, this is not Mozart. This is Gershwin. <laughs> um, American in Paris uh, is a really good example of musical painting. Um, you can hear car horns. If you've ever been to Paris, it's pretty loud. Um, so see if you can hear in the music what it's like to be in Paris.
We wanted to give the seniors a chance to put something together on their own. They chose this song. We backed it up with guitar, guitar and kit and bass and piano. Um, this is Taylor Swift.
mean, it's my first year, but I definitely wanted to acknowledge the seniors in this group because honestly, they helped me manage this whole thing. The, there's a strong tradition at Brentwood that goes on and they helped me like figure everything out and I didn't want to leave them without acknowledging um, how much you guys helped me out and how far they come in such a short way. Um, this is a gift from the rising juniors to, uh, from the concert singers and um, where's Elise? I mean, not Elise, uh, Samira, where you at? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, yeah, go ahead, yeah, just like, yeah, find a spot on stage. Where's Samira? Come on out. <laughs> okay, so can you go ahead and just uh, hand the gifts to the seniors in the orchestra as well? Everyone have lunch? Okay, great. So, yes, come on out. And um, the, the juniors and the underclassmen that are handing the gifts to the seniors, these are all section leaders, principal chairs um, for the coming year. And so this is somewhat of a passing of the torch. Um, Madrigals, can you open your little box thing? Are they sealed? Are they like plastically sealed? No. Okay, hold it up, somebody. Can you play it? I can't open it. I got it. <laughs> there it is. Can anyone in the audience tell them what this is? It's a pitch pipe, so no matter where the madrigals go in their lives, they will always be able to give themselves an A. <laughs> um, orchestra folk, can you hold up your gift, please? There it is. Show, show everybody, show everybody. Does anyone know what that is? It is a tuning fork. Does anyone know what note the tuning fork gives? And also an A. So anybody, um, musicians, as you go out into your lives, um, I hope you look back fondly on these memories. You won't remember the AP testing. You won't remember all the strife. You won't remember the struggle. But you will remember this performance for the rest of your lives. So can everybody please give a big hand to the seniors? Thank you, you guys, honestly. Really. <laughs> OK, get out of here. Oh, no, no, Love Mr. you guys. Kim. Mr. Kim. Yes. Mr. Kim. Let oh yeah, now they have us to be the only one celebrated up here. Oh, oh wow. Oh guys, God. it's Mr. Kim's first year, and to be honest, he just did such an amazing job with the group. He's so kind and he's such a talented, you know, musician, and we are so, so lucky to have him at Brentwood. The fact that they organized that all by themselves, that, that's, that, that's amazing. Like, that's not easy, <laughs> like, for adults. <laughs> um, okay, folks, we, um, can I get the rest of the choir back on the stage? Um, concert singers, would you mind clearing the chairs for us so we can get the choir back on stage? Uh, Madrigals, why don't you go ahead and exit the stage? Um, we're gonna bring you two more pieces for the, as I'm, I'm realizing we are forming a tradition here. Um, it's always more fun when there are more voices all together. There are two more pieces uh, that I put both of the choirs on. Um, the first one is called Unclouded Day. Um, it is a Appalachian folk tune that has been set by someone here in Southern California that I actually stand next to uh, in Los Angeles Master Corral. Um, it's catchy, it's American, they picked it up really quick, um, and the flavor of the music is intrinsic in our citizenship and being in this country, um, and they, I thought they should know these tunes. Um, and then the final piece is the finale from Act One of Into the Woods, and I thought it was appropriate because um, they've been going through a lot, and yet you need to go through the woods to find your way home and back again. And so I will be filling in, oh no, actually the narrator will be sung by um, one of our seniors. And uh, so please enjoy the last two pieces and uh, we'll see you at the next musical function, uh, if not at this year, um, this coming year. And we appreciate very much you being in this audience and absorbing this art that they worked so hard to put together. Um, and uh, please enjoy it. Thank you so much for coming.
came to pass. All that seemed wrong was now right. The kingdoms were filled with joy, and those who deserved to were certain to live a long and happy life. Ever after, ever after, journey over, all is mended, and it's not just for today, but tomorrow, and extended, ever after, ever after, all the curses have been lifted, the reverse is wiped away, all this tenderness and laughter, for forever after.